In this video we will study tool marks and other impressions. This is the second half of chapter 15 and will be the last chapter of this semester. First thing we're going to talk about are tool marks. Those are marks left by tools. And tools can be anything used to pry, scrape, or destroy objects. They can include hammers, screwdrivers, tire irons, crowbars, or anything available that could be used for prying or trying to open something that's locked. Our main concern in this part of the chapter is the collection and analysis of tool mark evidence. Tools should be collected and properly packaged. Paper will suffice unless the object is too heavy for a paper bag or is sharp, then use a box. Uh, be careful not to disturb any fingerprints. Never put the tool back into the impression that it created. And you can either take the marked material back to the lab or photograph it with a scale or use liquid silicone or dental stone to make a cast of the impression, but never put the tool back in the impression. When we are comparing tools to an impression, just as in bullets, we use the striations caused by the tool as our point of reference. Striations on the tool are either caused by the manufacturing process or wear. As you can see in this picture, the striations match up across the, the two halves of the picture. In this example of a tool mark, you can see the marks left by pliers on a padlock casing. Other impressions we're going to deal with are include tire tracks, shoe prints, and impressions left by clothing and blood or other non-evaporating liquids. Here you see a tire track. This can either be lifted using casting material or using photographs with scales, and we'll talk about those in the next couple of slides. Just as in the previous slide of the tire print, here we have a shoe print left behind in some sand. In the collection and preservation of normal impressions, shoe, tire, and other impressions need to be photographed using a scale, then they are preserved using dental stone cast. Dust impressions can either be lifted using electrostatic or chemical methods. Bloody footprint impressions can be enhanced using chemical means. Depending on the color of the background and the surface, the following can be used. Amido black, Hungarian red dye, leucal crystal violet, patent blue, fuchsine acid dye, tartrazine, or diamino benzidine. Examples of these dyes can be seen in your book in Chapter 15. Finally, impressions contain both class and individual characteristics. Class characteristics include size, width, manufacturer, things that are common to all the tires or shoes made by that specific manufacturer. Individual characteristics include wear patterns, cuts, manufacturing defects. All of these can be used together to match a specific impression to a specific object that made it. Make sure if you didn't understand anything in this video that you go back and replay it so you can understand the material before you get to class.